So the Las Vegas Raiders, in a 17-word statement on Friday, fire team president Dan Ventrelli, who took over for Mark Bedane, who stepped down last year. There's been a long list of Raiders executives who have left in recent months. The Raiders added no details, no facts, no allegations. There's all sorts of speculation rocketing around the NFL grapevine about different things that may have happened. Nobody knows. But we may get to the bottom of it because Vantrelli issued a statement on Friday night saying that he was fired after raising with the NFL allegations that have been made about Mark Davis of misconduct in the worst workplace hostile work environment now he doesn't say directly and specifically these were allegations of hostility directed toward females but at one point Ventrelli says I am at all times going to protect the organization and its female employees so it doesn't take an advanced degree in linguistics to understand what Ventrelli is trying to say the question is can he prove it how will he try to prove it he's retained counsel well you know what's going to happen chris it's going to be something that ends up at least if the nfl gets its way in the secret rig kangaroo court and we'll never know any of the allegations we'll never hear anything about it we'll never know what vantrelli alleged or what the facts may have shown or didn't show or what the truth may be or may not be or what the outcome will be we may hear about the outcome and usually the outcome is the team that is paying part of the commissioner's salary ends up winning so uh, we'll see how it goes. It's not like Mark Davis has been one of the one of the favorite owners in recent years. But even then, um, it this is one of those things where if it plays out in an open court, a lot more focus, a lot more attention, a lot more scrutiny, a lot more transparency. If it plays out in the court of Roger Goodell, we won't know what the hell happened. And that's the way the NFL tends to like it. That's right. I mean, and that's kind of where I expect it to go. I mean, ultimately... You know, unless, you know, Dan Ventrell continues to speak publicly and his lawyer continues to speak publicly and he lets it play out in the court of public opinion. Uh, again, that seems really going to be the only way uh, that I've come to determination, I feel like, that or you know, people that are a part of these situations are going to be able to fight back. Because the like you're talking about, the judicial system that's set up through the NFL, the CBA, everything, whatever, it's not really just it's not justice at the end of the day. It's like you said, it's kangaroo court. It's sided one way. So uh, it just, you know, it, I don't know what to think here. I mean, again, it's just not a good look for the Raiders. They're, they're, yeah, they've just dealt with the John Gruden stuff. And not only is it not good on, you know, Mark Davis and the Raiders, but it's just this continuing fight of the NFL against uh, changing their culture and, and workplace behavior and how people are treated in those certain situations. Here's another, you know, spotlight going to be, you know, we're going to have dissect this and where's this going to go? And uh, and it's just another headache for the NFL. Not a good look. And look, I don't want to use the silence of the Raiders since Friday night I know, against right. them. But, right. but, but, but it's a pretty big accusation by the team's former president who was ousted with a 17 word statement on Friday. If he says that these allegations were made, Mark Davis was dismissive. He passed them along to the league and then he gets fired in retaliation for communicating these concerns. I'd like to think that a 17 word statement saying everything that guy said is bullcrap would be in order. Something to respond to the grenade that he threw back into the Raiders organization with the statement that was issued on Friday night. Now, maybe we'll get it today. I don't know. But it just seems like something. Well, it's not we, a good we, look. You know, we, went, we, went through yeah. this, we went through this with the commanders a few weeks ago. Right. When the allegations were made, specific detailed allegations of financial improprieties of two different types, there was a 18-page letter that was sent by the commander's lawyer to the Federal Trade Commission, and it was released to the media, and it, and it had statements and, and, and quotes and just chapter and verse detail as to why the former employee who was saying all these things is wrong, and hey, they got to hash it out at some point, but it's the kind of public reaction that makes me think, well, hey, maybe they are innocent. If you're screaming it like this, if you, you know, maybe you are, maybe the Raiders are working on it. Maybe they're hiring the same lawyer to say, to do, do for us what you did for Washington. But at the end of the day, there's enough there that somebody needs to investigate it. The problem is if the investigation unfolds in a secret rigged kangaroo court of an arbitration with Roger Goodell or whoever he taps on the shoulder presiding, 
it's not going to be the kind of thing that really gets to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's the problem. No, it's not. I mean, will there be things fixed? Sure. But the NFL, yes. I mean, they're, they're going to try to fix this. But, yeah, it's going to be quietly under their own terms. Nobody's going to know. You're right. We're not going to know some of the details, how bad something might have been. You know, do I think the NFL wants to correct this? 100%. Yes. But they want to correct it and get it done at their own pace, on their own time, without a lot of media scrutiny or having to deal with that. I, I, do, th I do think that. But, yeah, by all due accounts, the way this looks just publicly, we've been in this situation before. You and I, we follow football all the time. It looks like, oh, here's longtime employee brought something that wasn't cool with the owner and maybe brought it to the league and they didn't like that and it was like hey screw you how dare you do that and you know have morals and and check our organization like that you're out of here that's what it looks like again i don't know that and it's early on but it just it certainly has the look of that the last thing the nfl needs is yeah. another investigation into allegations of misconduct directed toward female or minority employees because remember it was the letter that was sent by six attorneys general to the NFL several weeks ago saying, we're watching you and we reserve the right to investigate and take action to prosecute if there are crimes that have been committed. So the NFL is already on the radar screen of the law enforcement officers at the top of the food chain in six different states. They don't need this playing out publicly. They don't want it playing out privately. They don't want it playing out anywhere. But if they do have a situation, and the NFL did issue a statement Friday night saying it will immediately explore the allegations made by Ventrelli, then, then so be it. But see, this, this is the balancing act. How transparent are you with something like this? How much of it truly plays out in a way that the public and the media can understand it can look at it, can make determinations in the court of public opinion as to whether or not something happened that shouldn't have happened. Because the NFL, at the end of the day, does not want its dirty laundry hanging in the public square. It wants to be transparent. And Jerry Jones had some quotes to Bob Costas in November or thereabouts saying, hey, you know, we want people to pay attention to us. We can't complain when they do. That's the balancing act for the NFL. And the media, I think, Chris, has a big role in that because – we can either accept whatever lack of transparency they is, there is, whatever games they play to try to push the case into the secret rigged kangaroo court, which it is. I keep saying that. I, I keep waiting for the complaint from 345 Park Avenue. Why does Florio keep calling our internal arbitration procedures a secret rigged kangaroo court? My response will be because it is. Because it is. Because it is secret because it is rigged, and because it is a kangaroo court. If you don't like that term, look up what a kangaroo court is. That's what the commissioner conducted arbitration. It's not rules of procedure and evidence. It's not a fair shake. It's whatever the person who's running the arbitration feels like allowing in as evidence. And oh, but oh, well, this decision was made in a way that makes it harder for you to prove your case. Well, that's a shame. Bang the gavel, you lose. That's what a secret rigged kangaroo court does. So um, they, they need greater transparency. They need to embrace these flaws and not play a PR game with it. If they got problems, they need to address them. They need to investigate them. They need to solve them. Chris, you can't have it both ways. You can't create the impression no, that we're doing everything we can while you're hiding. It goes, it's a Brian Flores litigation in a nutshell. These are serious issues that we need to fully explore and develop, but we'll do it on our own. Yeah. Well, we don't, we right. don't need any help from the court system. Right. We don't need any prying eyes. We don't need the media looking or paying attention to what the testimony may be. We'll take care of it ourselves down the hall in the locked conference room uh, around the corner. You, you stay here. We'll get back to you. When it's over, we'll come back to you and tell you that we win. Just wait here. We'll, we won't be all that long unless we are. It's just – it's the NFL. They're, they're in transition through this period here still, and we're seeing it. Just the old school the, the old school NFL a little, and some of the workplace culture is just not worthy of 2022 workplace culture. And I think uh, the NFL is knows that. And I think there's a lot of teams that are, are plenty acceptable and do have the right workplace culture. Um, and I don't know why, but it seems like it's always the teams with kind of the younger coaches and they got a new young vibe to them a little bit too. But we've talked about this before. There's just a, there's an old school mentality in a lot of these buildings in the NFL that 
you know, just doesn't fly anymore. And this kind of sounds like it might be one of those two. So I don't know where this goes. You know, ultimately, I like you're saying, I don't oh. think. Yeah, go ahead. What? I'm not passing judgment. Yeah, I know I you're don't not. Know. All I know no, is this know. accusation's been made. Right. I want it to be investigated in a way that is fair and transparent. Right. Not, not we're going to pull it into our secret rig kangaroo court and we'll get back to you. It it needs something more than that. And 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 also also, I I said half jokingly on Friday night, paging Mary Jo White. At a certain point. You can no longer call her independent when she has become the basically this captive <laughs> right. outside lawyer who gets brought in to put out whatever fire you wanted to put out. She's no longer independent because people who exercise true independence often aren't invited back to exercise independence in the future because at some point you are going to say something to the powers that be that they don't want to hear and they regret hiring somebody who was independent you're being too damn independent mary joe don't you understand how this dance works that's the thing that the nfl gets indignant about that too but that's the way it works i lived in that world i know how that works you're not independent you are dependent on getting the next assignment and getting the next assignment the nfl is a huge company a cost insensitive client as the big law firms like to say you love doing work for the nfl because it takes a lot of time it generates a lot of money, and if you do the job right, they're going to have other problems too because they can't get out of their own way. Yeah. I, well, I, you know, one of the things that I wonder with situations like this is just a little of sometimes of like, you know, I, I just wonder with like Mark Davis how it goes down, how this went down with Dan Ventrell. You know, was it better? I mean, man, when you, when you fire him and release him of his duties, he's free to talk and do whatever. You know, again, he brought these to the league. Why, why, I don't know. I would just, I would love to know the efforts to smooth this over or get Dan to, hey, Dan, you know, okay, we'll fix this, do it, whatever. But, you know, th that's the other part that I always just wonder about these situations a little bit, specifically to this Raiders one, is just how bad was it? How bad was the conversation or whatever that you go, wait, I'm going to fire the guy so now he can make a public spectacle of it and really put my name and – everything in the spotlight for a lot of bad reasons uh, that that is scary in itself as well and that that's where I'm always a little shocked it comes to this point you know with some of these NFL teams because now the dirty laundry gets aired instead of hey let's keep them in here you know like keep your friends close but your enemies closer let's keep them here and try to soothe this over so we don't have to deal with the blowback and everything and the whole league doesn't have to deal with it uh I, I'm always intrigued by that aspect as well and the, the other reality, too, is, and they've already told us we need to take a break, but I want to yeah. say this one thing, and it may become more than one thing. Um, a lot of times this isn't about what happened and fleshing out the facts and coming up with a fair and appropriate punishment that respects the precedent that's been created by past decisions. It's just, you know what? We're kind of pissed off at Mark Davis now for whatever reason. We we either like him or we don't like him. We want to find that he did it or we want to find that he didn't do it. Where the NFL wants to be at the outcome of these investigations and then working backward, that's why Mary Jo White keeps getting the work. She gives them what they want, in my opinion. I don't need to get sued over this. This is my opinion of the way this works. And the fact that she keeps, you know, they got the speed dial for Mary Jo White anytime one of these comes up. She figures out what they want. And she works backward to give them what they want. That's what I believe happens. And I don't want to get you triggered over Deflategate, but when Ted Wells was brought in, I think the unspoken message was this is what we want. And we want a 500 page report that's going to justify what we yeah, want. I hear you. It shouldn't be about what they want. It shouldn't be we like Mark Davis. We don't like Mark Davis. We like Dan Snyder. We don't like Dan Snyder. We like this guy. We don't like this guy. That shouldn't be part of it. It shouldn't be what the commissioner wants the end result to be and that this may just be some fortunate way that we can go hammer Mark Davis at a time when we'd love to. Or or we really like Mark Davis. We're going to find a way to give him a pass here. That That's not how it should work. But that's how it that's how it, it does work. Now, And I'm sure that this is true of most American businesses where this discretion can be exercised. But that doesn't mean we should be quiet. You know, they try to create the sense that they're doing things in a fair and objective and and even handed way. 
The reality is, you know, they want to hammer the Saints for Bounty Gate. They're going to hammer the Saints. And if, if they want to ignore that other teams had the same damn kind of program going on for years, they'll ignore it, which is exactly what they did. They wanted to get the Saints. They didn't want to go get Greg Williams at any other stop he'd been on where he had done similar things over the past 15 years, if not longer. They just wanted to get the Saints, and that was it. So what they want to get, who they want to go after, that, that, that's just part, that's part of this. And you got to understand those political realities with the NFL when something like this comes along because it's not about doing a pristine investigation and letting the facts take you wherever they may. It's trying to get the facts to take you to where you want to go. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I don't. You know, I, I don't disagree with anything you said there. I think you're right. You're spot on there. You know, even even with your Deflate Gate part there, because you know, there's more. Yes, I got I got you. I hear you. They there's a narrative. There's an outcome they want. She can fit that, and I understand that. Deflate Gate. They could have. There was enough there. They could have reached whatever decision they wanted to reach. And a good lawyer can navigate through whatever the facts are to get you to where you want to be. It's where you want to be that is what matters. Good lawyers get you there. Yeah. They'll set aside the evidence that undermines the path that they want to, to cut, and they'll focus on the facts that do. If it's ever clear, if it's ever so clear there's no way you can cut a path through the facts to get to where you want to be, then why are we even here? Yeah, that's right. Anytime you've got a muddled situation, you can find something to support what it is that you want to do. And that's, that's my biggest complaint here, that the NFL, when it comes to these types of issues, is not guided by a sense of whatever – the facts will reveal, we will objectively assess and punish accordingly. It's all a means to an end. And the end is predetermined. And we have to we have to I know that's cynical, but it's 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 accurate. I've been following this long enough to know it is entirely accurate. Hi, I'm Mike Tarico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.